but he's still surprisingly tough for his age. Thanks for the workout. You'll learn the ropes one day, kid. Happy New Year, my feline friends. Till date, many heroes and villains have adopted the feline identity across comic book companies, be it Catwoman, Catman, and Cheetah from DC or the Black Cat and Black Panther from Marvel. Today, we will delve into the origin of Ted Grant, aka Wildcat, a wartime boxer, a longtime member of the JSA, and a mentor to multiple superheroes. We will also look into the people who assumed the Wildcat identity later in the DC. DCU. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Still the undefeated champ, Wildcat! Origins Theodore Ted Grant made his first appearance in Sensation Comics issue number one in January 1942. He was created by writer Bill Finger and artist Erwin Hassan. Ted's story winds back to the World War II era on Earth 2. His father Henry was an honest man. He taught him discipline and showed him how to box. As a kid, he saw Green Lantern come to Earth and wanted to be a superhero like him. When he reached maturity, Ted was so proficient in boxing that he was termed a wildcat in the boxing world. But the wartime Time was tough. Henry lost everything in debt, and Ted had to drop out from college. There was crime and unemployment all around. One night, Henry saved a man from some muggers. That man was a pro boxer, Mike Soccer Smith Muldon, who trained him further and made him a boxing star. Later, crime boss Victor Moretti and Ted's manager Flint Fane decided to fix a match between Ted and Muldon and wanted Muldon to lose. When Muldon denied, Fane put a needle in Ted's gloves laced with sedatives, but unfortunately miscalculated the dosage. He activated the needle during the fight and got Molden, but Molden died in the ring. Ted was apprehended as the main suspect, but Moretti and Flint ordered a hit on the squad car. All the police were killed, but Ted survived. Ted took on his Wildcat moniker and drove Moretti and Flint to confess their crimes. Once his name was cleared, he kept functioning as a Wildcat and fighting crime. He later joined the Justice Society of America in the 60s. He was a replacement member and helped set up the team with Green Lantern, Alan Scott, and Flash Jay Garrick. He was an undisputed winner in the field of boxing, so he decided to retire. Later, he trained a young Batman, Black Canary, Selina Kyle, and Jack Knight. However, he came back again to assume the mantle of Black Cat to fight Injustice. On Earth-1, another version of Ted Grant existed. He was a boxing heavyweight champion and had a very brief career as a superhero. He later retired from crime fighting post-Crisis on Infinite Earths event. This version was merged with his original Earth 2 counterpart. His paralysis from the crisis was degraded to lesser injuries, from which he recovered in a short time. Then he served as a superhero in Earth 1 with his history from Earth 2 intact. Ted has got affiliations in nearly all major teams of the DC Universe. Justice Society of America, Suicide Squad, All-Star Squadron, and Justice League. Ted Grant as Wildcat was ranked as the 71st best comic book character of all time by IGN, who claimed that because of his advanced age as a superhero, he is almost as enigmatic as the Spectre. Powers and Abilities He was exposed to the mystic energies of Ian Carcole in 1941. This exposure slowed down his aging and kept him at his physical prime even during his old age. Following King Inferno and Zatara's curse in 1945, Ted had nine lives that he could use at the time of any single combat. He could come back from dead and heal eight consecutive times, but if he used up the ninth life in that same fight, he would be dead. His nine lives were eventually restored at the time of his next fight to be used again. He he is a master of martial arts and boxing and has preternatural eyesight that helps him to see in pitch black darkness. He uses a modified Indian stunt rat bike for transportation which he calls his Cato cycle. He is able to slice through metals with his claws. Also, he was depicted to have insulation against mind control. He has taken many superheroes under his wing and taught them how to fight. He is respected as a mentor amongst the league members. However, he was never shown to use any of his superpowers when he was in the boxing ring or when he was trained his students. That made his character a standout as he has his powers under complete control and could use them as per his will, much like Green Lantern who inspired him to be a superhero. 
the Cat People. While setting up the JSA on Earth 2, Ted was introduced to Tommy Bronson, an enlister for the team. It was revealed by Alan and Jay that Tommy was Ted's son for Marilyn Bronson, who was Ted's love interest in the past. Ted gelled with Tom and learned that he was a werecat like his mother. While they were reuniting, Vandal Savage attacked them. Ted and Tommy staved off Savage's attack. Later, Ted took Tommy under his wing and started training him. Post crises, Tommy's character retained the same history. On Earth 1, Tommy took over the moniker of Wildcat from his father for a brief time. He later joined the JSA and took up the alias Tomcat. Yolanda Montez debuted in Infinity Inc. issue number 12 in March 1985. He was created by Roy Thomas, Danette Thomas, and Don Newton. She was born as a metahuman due to the results of the experimental drugs that were administered to her mother during pregnancy by the evil gynecologist Dr. Benjamin Love. Later, her mother came to New York to be with her husband, Juan Montez. Yolanda was very fond of her godfather Ted since childhood. It was at the same time she started manifesting her metahuman powers. During the Crises and Infinite Earths event, Ted was paralyzed while saving a child. Yolanda took over the identity of Wildcat and joined Infinity Inc. She was later killed during a battle battle with Eclipso. Hector Ramirez from Earth-1 debuted in Batman and Wildcat issue number 1 in April 1997 post-crises. He was created by Chuck Dixon, Vue Smith. He was the protege of Ted Grant. Ted trained him in boxing since he was a youngster. Later, in the pursuit of honoring his mentor, he took up the identity of Wildcat and started operating in Gotham as a crime fighter. While he had no superpowers, he was a skilled boxer and hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Tales of the Wildcat, Armageddon Inferno Post-crises, Ted and the other JSA members voluntarily banished themselves into Limbo, a space created as a part of a time loop, in order to save the world from Ragnarok. He stayed there for a while before being set free with the JSA during the Armageddon Inferno event. Zero Hour, A Crisis in Time He witnessed the Justice Society's devastating battle with Extant during the Zero Hour event and fell victim to Extant's time-bending abilities. It caused Wildcat to be brought back to his rightful age, that of an old, frail man. With him, the Golden Age Flash Jay Garrick, the Golden Age Green Lantern Alan Scott, and the Golden Age Hour Man Rex Tyler were all de-aged and returned to full health after the universe was restored. After Zero Hour, he retired from crime fighting and became a mentor and trained new recruits. During this time, his eldest son Jake was murdered by Killer Wasp, although he was heartbroken and didn't stop him from carrying on his quest to help the other superheroes. Splitting of the JSA In the main JSA storyline, a black hole was created by fellow JSA member Starman, who is on a normal mission to save an apartment building that was on fire. Through the black hole, Superman from Earth-22 arrived. This Superman foretold the end of the world as predicted by a god called Gog and his prophet. Wildcat believed him and was transported to the Temple of Gog in Africa, where Gog was getting resurrected. Wildcat tried to convince the JSA to destroy Gog but failed. The new JSA recruit Lance was recruited as Gog's disciple, Lance later took on the identity of Magog. Magog joined the JSA and operated from their headquarters named Brownstone. However, he challenged the leadership of the old members, which got him into altercations with Wildcat. A brief fight ensued, which was broken by an attack on Brownstone by the villain Johnny Sorrow. The JSA was saved eventually by Dr. Faith. Brownstone was decimated and the JSA split into two groups based on their ideals. One group was led by Magog and Power Girl, and the other group was led by Wildcat and the other old members. The Attack of Mordru Wildcat's new squad relocated to an abandoned JLA outpost where he befriended Mr. America. Meanwhile, Mordru, the timeless Lord of Chaos, escaped from Dr. Fate's amulet. He defeated Dr. Fate, removed his collar and amulet, and put on the recognizable Dr. Fate attire. Mordru then made an attempt to take over the entire planet with the help of Eclipso and Obsidian. Mordru teleported the JSA members into separate pocket universes where they had to face custom challenges. Only by overcoming those challenges, they could escape. Wildcat was sent to a universe where giant soft teddy bears were attacking him. The more he punched, the more they absorbed the force with their soft bodies. It was a fight he couldn't punch his way out of. On the verge of hopelessness, he was saved by the real Dr. Fate who had escaped the trap of Mordru. Wildcat then teamed up with Fate and JSA and defeated Mordru and trapped him in the Rock of Eternity. 
Attack of the Fourth Reich. The Justice Society started operating out of a new base, but was attacked by Captain Nazi in the Fourth Reich. Wildcat fought Captain Nazi but was killed in the same battle. Later, he was resurrected by his metahuman abilities. The Fourth Reich revealed a darkness engine that was crafted to subdue any form of meta powers. They then trapped the team in the shadow of War's cloak. As of now, the JSA are positioned in the future, where it was revealed that Wildcat was killed in the Nazi extermination camps. The Cat vs. The Bat Wildcat and Batman faced off with each other in a standalone Batman Wildcat miniseries. A bloodied up corpse wearing a Wildcat costume was discovered in Gotham Harbor. Gordon called Batman for help on the investigation. Having trained under Ted Grant, Batman found out that the dead man was Hector Ramirez, the boxing protege of Ted. He had discovered Ted's identity and wanted to honor his mentor as Wildcat. He landed into a closed arena match where contenders fight to the death. There, he was killed by Killer Croc. Batman came to know of his match when he found out that it was aired for fellow millionaires who paid a huge amount to watch that perverted blood sport. It was called the Secret Ring. It was revealed that the Secret Ring was run by a man called Annie Chubb. Chubb was once a renowned heavyweight boxer, but his aggressive habits led to the demise of several opponents. The promoters originally advised Chubb to control his temper, but when he wouldn't, they permanently banned him from the sport. Chubb believed that the promoters and fighters were merely jealous of his powers, since Chubb's superior skills, knowledge, and sheer force were unmatched by their inferior human fragility and lack of endurance. Chubb regarded boxing as his birthright and was determined to reclaim it. He had ordered a criminal lockup to abduct multiple criminals across Gotham. He planned to pit them against each other in the death match until the last man was standing. Chubb would then kill the last man to declare himself the best there is. Batman started investigating it with Robin. Meanwhile, grieving the loss of his student, Ted also put on the Wildcat costume and ravaged Gotham's criminal underworld in the search of Hector's killer. Hector came to know the location of the secret ring from a fixer named Flea. Oracle deducted from the same location from the broadcast feed for the match. Both Batman and Wildcat Cat reached the location, but the guards there took them down and locked them up. The henchmen put masks on their faces so they could not see whom they were fighting and pitted them against each other in the secret ring while the fight was being recorded. During the hardcore bare-knuckle fight, Batman recognized Wildcat's moves. He tried telling Wildcat that he was Batman, but when Wildcat could not be controlled, Batman punched and broke his mask. Wildcat then saw who he was fighting and removed Batman's mask as well. They attacked the MC and escaped the fighting cage. Ernie and Lockup unleashed all the abducted villains on Batman and Wildcat. Eventually, Batman Batman and Wildcat were able to subdue all of them. Wildcat then challenged Ernie into a cage fight. Ernie started off good, but then Wildcat beat him brutally and defeated him, and showed him what a disappointment he actually was. Then Wildcat and Batman punched locked up unconscious. Later, Wildcat and Batman said their goodbyes after all of Gotham's criminals were apprehended. The Blackest Night Falls During the Blackest Night, Wildcat was in New York City guarding Star Labs while Mr. Terrific tried to come up with a strategy to eliminate the Black Lanterns. Wildcat and Power Girl stood by Mr. Terrific's side in case the base was compromised. When a Black Lantern version of Lois Lane from Earth 2 attacked, Wildcat teamed up with Power Girl to stop the Black Lantern Lois Lane. Wildcat kept fighting off the Black Lantern swarm. Once Mr. Terrific finished building his weapon, he used it and eliminated all of the Black Lanterns in the tri-state region. Doomsday Clock and Death Metal Wildcat was one of the superheroes that made a comeback in Doomsday Clock, the Watchmen prequel after Dr. Manhattan was motivated by Superman to undo the experiment on the chronology that eliminated the Justice Society and the Legion of Superheroes. He was spotted with Yolanda Montez who was dressed as a Wildcat. Wildcat was with Alan Scott, Jay Garrick, and Dr. Fate when they were guarding the Valhalla Cemetery in the pages of Dark Knight's Death Metal. It's a cat-infested multiverse. In the Injustice 2 reality, the prequel comics to the second Injustice game, Wildcat initially became a parental figure for Black Canary in Green Arrow's wedding. Wildcat was one of the insurgency members who joined the raid on Raish's hideout in South America when the League of Assassins' Suicide Squad kidnapped Black Lightning's daughters and Canary and Arrow's son. Wildcat subsequently confronted the imposter Batman but was fatally shot. Connor Lance Queen came to the rescue by blasting the counter 
counterfeit Batman with a sonic scream he inherited from his mother Black Canary. The counterfeit Batman left a near-dead wildcat in Gotham General Hospital with serious wounds, blood loss, and a very little chance of making a full recovery. In order to activate Wildcat's power to rise from the dead, Batman went to the unconscious Wildcat and removed the life support system. Then he asked Wildcat to drive him to the remote doctor Midnight so that the latter might operate on Superboy's heart. In a cameo appearance in the DC The New Frontier reality, Wildcat defended his heavyweight championship against Cautious Clay. Wildcat was portrayed as a humanoid Black Panther with Ted Grant's soul in the Kingdom Come reality. He was shown collaborating with Batman's team as well as the other Justice League scions. In Press Records reality in The Sandman World's End, Wildcat was presented as a boxer rather than a superhero. Press and his fiancée were fired at by a Wildcat-obsessed lady who killed her and injured him. While he was in the hospital, Press requested that Wildcat spend time with him for a while. They reconciled during that time. Ted Grant made an appearance as a boxer who lived in the same world army refugee camp as Dick and Barbara Grayson during Darkseid's invasion of Earth in the narrative Earth 2, World's End. It was a part of the new 52 reboot following Barbara's passing. Ted trained Dick in both offensive and defensive combat strategies and teamed up with him on a mission to find his kidnapped son. Just sit tight. I'll be there in 10 minutes. Would those be real minutes or wildcat minutes? Hey, come on. Paw prints in other media. Justice League Unlimited Wildcat appeared in the animated series Justice League Unlimited in the episode The Cat and the Canary. It aired on the 5th of February 2005. He was voiced by Dennis Farina. In the series, Ted Grant joined the Justice League post-Thanagarian invasion as an aged member. To add to his ongoing midlife crisis, he was assigned lesser and lesser missions as time went by. He became frustrated and joined Roulette's Meta Brawl, the only place where he could do what he always does, fight. He rose in the ranks in no time but Canary, his former student, saw this as a path to Ted's destruction. She tried to convince him to leave the fight, but Ted bluntly denied doing so. You're entertainment for these people, the rooster in a cockfight. Fighting is what I do. With the help of Green Arrow, Canary sabotaged Ted's fight with the Atomic Skull and went to fight him instead. But Green Arrow knocked her out with his Trick Arrow and took her place. A fight between Ted and Green Arrow ensued. Ted beat Green Arrow brutally to the edge of death and was taken aback when he witnessed that the Bloodsport had turned him into an unfeeling beast. After that, Black Canary unleashed a sonic scream that decimated Roulette's arena and the heroes escaped. Ted came back to the league and agreed to take therapy from the Martian Manhunter to curb his fighting urges. After a brief time in therapy, he joined the league as one of her frontline fighters. Apart from this episode that was based on him, Wildcat has made multiple cameo appearances in the Justice League animated series. You know, it's a bad idea to eat raw eggs. What's that, Bat? Batman the Brave and the Bold Wildcat appeared in Season 1 of this series in Episode 6 titled Enter the Outsiders. It was aired on January 9, 2009. His comic book history was retained in this series. In the episode, three teenagers with superhuman abilities, Black Lightning, Katana, and Metamorpho were under the influence of Slug. Slug persuaded them to commit crimes against society as they had grown weary of it. Wildcat teamed up with Batman and defeated Slug, and he then tried to reason with the three outsiders and showed him the right path. However, he suffered a heart attack. He was saved by the three outsiders whom he took under his wing and trained him. Wildcat further appeared in Season 1, Episode 17, titled Menace of the Conqueror Caveman, which aired on May 15, 2009. Batman asked Wildcat to work with him in Gotham City to capture an escaped prisoner. Wildcat was dubious regarding the criminal's identity until he was revealed to be Bane. Bane's venom tube was severed by Wildcat with a batarang while Bane was preoccupied with murdering Batman. Bane was stunned using an electrified third rail. Wildcat again appeared in Season 2, Episode 5, titled The Golden Age of Justice, which aired on January 15, 2010. Wildcat and the Justice Society got back together for a public event at JSA headquarters. Per Degathan and his aide, Professor Z hatched a scheme for global dominance once Per Degathan emerged from suspended animation. Wildcat decided to stick around with Black Canary and vowed to fight with her. Together, they entered the fight and contributed to Professor Z's 
in Perdigatten's Downfall. Again, he appeared in Season 2, Episode 13 and 14, the two-parter titled Siege of Starro, which aired in September 2010. The villainous faceless hunter implanted Starro clones on Wildcat and the other Justice Society members and started mind-controlling them. Wildcat assisted in neutralizing a still-infected Aquaman during the Starro invasion. Firestorm, Bawana Beast, Captain Marvel, and Batman joined forces to fight the faceless hunter and stop the invasion of Starro. He appeared in Season 3, Episode 11, titled Christ Ceased, 22,300 Miles Above Earth, which aired on October 28, 2011. In this episode, Wildcat and the Justice Society were invited to the Justice League Watchtower to meet the new Justice League International. Driven by their generation gap, the old heroes from Justice Society started bickering with the young ones, while Batman and Talia worked together to thwart Rej Al Ghul's evil plans on Earth. The heroes started fighting each other in the Watchtower, however, when Batman Batman and Talia were tied to a rocket and targeted at the sun, both the leagues arrived to save them. Wildcat teamed up with Martian Manhunter and Hawkman and incapacitated Raish's minions. While the other heroes fought, Wildcat took on Ubu alone and defeated him in a bare-handed fight. Eventually, Batman and Talia were rescued by Guy Gardner and Alan Scott, and the Justice League reconciled their differences with the Justice Society. Wildcat made his cameo in several other episodes in the Brave and the Bold series. In all the episodes, he was voiced by R. Lee Ermey cameos in DC animated movies and other animated series. The animated movie Teen Titans Go to the Movies had a brief cameo by the Ted Grant version of Wildcat. Justice League The New Frontier also featured him. In the Justice League Crisis and Two Earths movie, an evil Wildcat from Earth 3 arrived as one of the made men of the crime syndicate. The animated series Young Justice Episode Humanity had a brief cameo by the Ted Grant version of Wildcat. John DiMaggio provided the voice of Ted Grant's Wildcat in the DC Super Superhero Girls animated series. Live action. In the two part Smallville episode Absolute Justice, Ted Grant, played by Roger Haskett, had a brief cameo. This version belonged to the Justice Society of America, a group of superheroes who were mostly active in the 1970s until being compelled to stop by the authorities. Grant continued to compete as a boxer professionally despite this. J.R. Ramirez plays the recurring role of Ted Grant in the third season of Arrow. This version used the Wildcat Gym to teach street suits in boxing in the hopes that it would help them turn their lives around. He also used to be a vigilante in the Glades, fighting street crime, but he stopped after his companion Isaac Stanzler killed someone. He taught Laurel Lance in the present, giving her the skills she would eventually require to become a proficient warrior. Later on, he assisted the Arrow and his friends in eliminating Stanzler and ending Daniel Brickwell's assault on the Glades. He was hurt during the struggle, but it's unclear what happened to him. In the Stargirl series, Ted Grant and Wildcat is portrayed by Brian Stapp. In this incarnation, the superhero was a member of the Justice Society of America who had an exosuit that boosted his inherent agility. Grant and the JSA were ambushed by the Injustice Society in the first episode and Grant was tragically thrown out of a window by an unidentified assailant. Ten years later, Yolanda Montez took over as the new Wildcat after inheriting Grant's outfit. In the Robot Chicken DC Comics special, Ted Grant's portrayal of Wildcat voiced by Matthew Senreich made a brief cameo. Video games. Ted Grant appeared in Batman the Brave and the Bold the video game, where R. Lee Ermey provided a voice once more. Ken Webster provided a voice of Ted Grant's Wildcat in the DC Universe online game. Let's go a couple around, big boy. I've had heavy bags that hit back harder than you do. Marvelous verdict. That would be it, my feline friends, as the DC Metaverse expands and faces life-threatening evils across every mega event, Wildcat will always come to save the world. Always standing tall and strong, he will always be a symbol of hope for those in need. If you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.